Hey, hey, you all. Welcome. Welcome back. You already know what it is. You see the title of this video. This is Bell Collective Season 1, Episode 9. And apparently, <laughs> this was the season finale. So, you all, I don't have many thoughts because it was just okay. It was wrapping everything up. I didn't know this was the season finale. I remember seeing the previews for this episode and thinking, oh, they're wrapping everything up. Is this the season finale? Is this the series finale? But they never labeled it as such. But we know that the two-part reunion starts this Friday. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I have some notes. So if I look down from time to time, that's why. So we pick up where we left off at, which is the Black Love Dinner hosted by Letitia and Glenn. Not much to carry on here, you all, except that I thought Letitia was real out of line asking Marie where Cedric was. Like, this is your home, girl. Like, in this circumstance, we can completely say that Letitia broke girl code. Like, you know the things that she's been through with Cedric. You know how toxic the relationship is. You know that Cedric goes missing. Like, for you to ask that question in front of her date, what if she didn't tell her date about Cedric, right? You were just all out of order. Like, if it were me, I would have got your behind straight right then and there. Like, don't, don't ask me no ish like that. Pull me to the side. Call me girl later on, text me, but don't ask me that in front of my date. Marie handles it well. She basically says like, uh, who's Cedric? And she explains to them that Darius um, goes way back with their family because Marie's brother played in the NBA and so did Darius. So it's some history there. So good for Marie. She seems happy. You know, anything is better than that bag of trash that was Cedric. We then see Glenn stand up and make an announcement that he wants 100%, which you all... This is corny. I knew what he was going to say. He said he won 100% of her heart and he reproposes, tears up the contract. So here's the thing, you all. I don't know if what we are seeing in the previews, if it's out of context, because you know they do that to us for reunions. But let's just say what we see is what we get where Glenn has a possible child outside the marriage. Listen, Letitia, I know you said you wanted to um, start over, but... Glenn can repropose. You all can have a ceremony reception. Um, you all can renew your vowels all you want to. If bad behavior is still being executed, if there's a consistency in the same behavior that got you to the point where you needed to restart, then you all on top on top of renewing your vows, you need to enroll in some marriage counseling. Like seriously, because. It doesn't make any sense. Like, if he's still acting a fool out here, then the proposal was for not. In terms of the ring, it was just okay. I didn't really like it. It looked like a middle of the mall ring. You know, no shade, but that's what it looked like. Um, for me, I wanted rose gold, double halo pair, and that's what I got. So, everyone's taste is different, but if she likes it, I love it. So, yeah, shout out to Letitia and Glenn. They're going to be renewing their vows, so... I guess we'll see more of this next season. <laughs> Moving on. You all listen. The next uh, scene was with Kayla on the race. Says, I have no energy from her. So this is what I will say. I thought her goat Capricorn was cute. Moving on. Next, we get to Latrice's launch party for Essential Beauty. So you all, there are a few things I'm unclear about. And I would love for you all to provide clarity. So I have a couple of questions. Please answer them below because I could have missed it. You know, I could have just been not paying attention. So, one, the name Essential, where did Latrice get it from? Is it a mix between Essential and the word Sensual? Or, you know, what's, what's, what's the etymology <laughs> of the word? Like, what is it? Where did she get it from? Because it doesn't fall smoothly on the ear. Because at first when she was saying Essential Beauty... I thought she was saying essential. And then I saw how it was spelled and I said, oh, essential. So please let me know the history of the word. Like, where did she come up with it? Is it supposed to be a mix of those two words or is it something else? Second, I heard Latrice say that this was a natural hair care line. So is she saying that it is a natural hair care line, meaning that it has natural ingredients? Or is she saying that it's for women like myself who wear, you know, who wear our natural hair, right? This is a wig, but you, you guys have seen my natural hair. Is that what she's saying? Because if so, if it's the latter, 
We've never seen Latrice's natural hair. And I feel very uncomfortable with someone marketing a natural hairline, a natural hair care line to women who wear their hair, you know, in its natural state. And you around here wearing wigs and weaves, not because you can't wear wigs and weaves, but because we haven't seen Latrice's natural hair. And also the Claremont twins to me, they just were not a good representation of a natural hair care line. So if someone could fill me in, because I could be totally wrong about the latter, she could literally mean that it has natural ingredients and nothing else. But I just wanted to know, because if she's marketing it towards natural hair, then Latrice, we need to see your natural hair, right? So at the launch party, I will say, Latrice looked beautiful. I loved her outfit. Um, I loved the color. It was just beautiful. However, it didn't, it didn't seem like a very busy launch party, right? And, and Cliff and Glenn sat up there drinking Hennessy, asking Kaylon, the racist uh, partner, you know, did he want some? Honey, that white man didn't want no Hennessy, especially not to be drinking with y'all Negroes, okay? If Kaylon's a racist, what you think her man is, right? So Melanie, Latrice's publicist, stands up, and she just basically wants to announce or she has some announcements. So this is another question, right? Latrice's publicist, Melanie, one, what was she wearing? Next season, you all, I, I want to see some opulence. Like anybody can wear fast fashions. Um, anybody can order something from Fashion Nova, right? Like I did not like Melanie's outfit. It looked like she just hit order and send from Fashion Nova. I want to see something a little better. She's a beautiful woman and she's dressed better in the prior episode, but this this launch party, uh-uh, no, it, it wasn't doing it for me. But at the launch party, she says that one of Latrice's goals is to enter into a, is, is to do go into business with a national retailer. They didn't mention the retailer's name, though. And by Latrice's reaction, when they cut to her, she, you know, she had an arm up. It was like, oh, my God. But they didn't say which retailer. So... Was Melanie just saying that she was working on it and she was in active negotiations or did she actually announce the name before whatever reason they couldn't release it? Maybe negotiations fell through. I don't know. Is Latrice's essential beauty, is that in stores near us? If so, let me know and tell me what stores. But just to wrap up this scene, it was a launch party. We will see if Latrice's products are in store. Moving on, you all. <laughs> another grand opening, another launch party, right? So we are at the ribbon cutting ceremony for Marie and Essie's mental health care facility, which congratulations to them because Marie said that she wanted to start this business, you know, because you know of her background. You know, Marie told us about her mother and how she suffered from debilitating and severe mental illness that led her to abuse drugs. And so she wants to help other families that are impacted by mental health like she was. So cool for her, you all. Um, we go in the inside and you all, I would have loved to see just a, a smidge more of decor. You know, you don't have to have real flowers if you don't want to. You could have went and got some fake flowers and put it on the tables, you know. Just having those uh, white tablecloths is just, you know, not my type of hype. But um, they enter into the reception and Marie introduces Tamara and Letitia to her father, which her father looked really young, you all. I don't know what I was expecting, but he looked really young. Like they look like they could be siblings and not, you know, father, daughter. But Darius has also come to support her and the girls begin to kind of tease her and pick on her. She was like, y'all go on with that. My father's sitting there. I thought that was, I thought that was really cute and funny. I will say this. I would have liked to have seen the rest of the space. I get the feeling that Marie and Essie's space was much like Antoinette's where it was unfinished, right? Because you hear them talking and you hear Marie saying how happy she is and how she dropped Cedric, like she's just moving on in a different direction, like today's a new day. And then Letitia says, okay, well, show us a tour, give us a tour and they walk off. But the audience never sees the building. I'm unsure why, but I have a feeling that it wasn't finished. Like this episode just felt very rushed. So congratulations to Maria and Essie. Like I'm here for black women entrepreneurs. So another launch party, <laughs> another sip and see, another grand opening for this episode. Moving on. You all, we get to Tamra and Damon and you know, really nothing to see here. <laughs> they go on a date in the park and she's just basically telling him like for now, She's gonna stay in Jackson. She has the number one, um, the number one midday show, which you all 
Tamara doesn't have a choice, right? She tells him about the sizzle reel. He was like, oh, it couldn't have been that bad. No, Damon, it was that bad. <laughs> it, it really was. So she says for right now, she's just going to, you know, focus on Jackson. I guess build up from there. She really brought Damon to the part because she wanted to ask him about helping to fertilize her eggs, right? So she asked Damon, she was like, you know, the entire time we weren't together, like I never had kids, you never had kids. So what's the reason? Damon tells her because he was waiting on Tamra. Girl, <laughs> if you believe that. And Tamra was so excited to hear that. Like, you know, I, she was just going off in her confessional. Like, girl, that's some bull swanky. Okay, if you believe it, fine. But that's some bull. He wasn't waiting around on you. If he was waiting around on you and your relationship was that important, why didn't he just propose and y'all get married? Like, Talking about something he couldn't find nobody that had the more on caliber. Good girl, bye. He, he, he lying. But anyways, Tamara asked Damon, will he help her? <laughs> will he give her some assistance in fertilizing her eggs? And he seems very hesitant because he wants to do it the natural route. But he agrees, right? And Tamara basically closes that says that Damon is her best friend. And who better to raise children with than your best friend? Which... <laughs> Okay, y'all just started. It's funny because Tamara didn't want to go to the couple's dinner because her and Damon had just started dating, right? And they really didn't know what they were. And she didn't want to put any pressure on him. But to me, asking a man to fertilize your eggs, I mean, that, that seems like a lot of pressure, right? You all just start dating. But it's kind of like you kind of, you, 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 I just kind of feel, I don't know if I'm articulating myself correctly, but in one instance, she didn't want to go to a dinner, a black love dinner, because her and Damon had just started dating. But on the other instance, she's like, boom, fertilize my eggs. Like, the two don't, I, I can't really reconcile the two, right? If you all are new and you're just starting to relearn each other, do you really want him to be the father of your children? But obviously, the answer is yes. So, good luck to Tambra and Damon, because child... <laughs> We'll see what happens at the reunion. Moving on. Next, we see Letitia and Marie. They are meeting up for lunch. And the idea of this is so that Letitia can drop the bomb on Marie that Ferris Street seems to be going nowhere, right? She tells Marie that basically, you know, she has everything ready to go, but no one's returning her calls, which Marie gets her some sound advice. Like, is there someplace else? Is there a different area? Is there a different building that perhaps you can look to to start this business and to get this off the ground. And Letitia is like, well, no, because my heart is set on Ferris Street. So here's the thing, Letitia, you gotta be realistic, right? If they're not returning your phone calls for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because of the brunches, I don't know if it's because of the money situation, whatever reason it may be, right? You have to have a plan B and a plan C. It sounds good, right? Cause you know, a lot of people will tell you, I don't have a plan B and they sound stupid, right? You always need to have a plan B just in case something happens. And in this instance, we know that Letitia has an emotional connection to Ferris Street. We know why she wants to put it there, but there has to be other areas that were once black owned or that are in black communities that you can revitalize and service your community and, and, and service this, the particular need you're looking to hone in on. I like that Marie encouraged her. I like that she told her, you know, you have to keep pressing forward, right? It, maybe this is not the spot. Maybe it's not the time, you know, delayed, but not denied. And you know, to be honest, Letitia, like you were about to invest $2 million in something that you didn't even own you were going to be renting. So listen, you were about to do all this work on someone else's property essentially. So maybe this just is not the space for you. Maybe there's another building that you can actually own and you won't have to worry about renting and basically investing and not getting anything out of it. So hopefully Letitia can find another space or another area to do this whole brunch business and women's entrepreneur business. Moving on to the final scene. <laughs> Because I'm telling you, if I had to discuss one more sip and see, grand open, ribbon cutting ceremony, launch party, I was going to go crazy. But we get to Antoinette's sip and see. David comes to Antoinette's sip and see and he brings her flowers. Listen, you all, you can't convince me that Antoinette likes black men. Hell, she don't even like black women, let alone a black man. So it was a cute enough scene, but you just cannot convince me that this is going to go far. Like we, we've seen the underbelly of Antoinette. Honey, she ain't interested in that man. She, 
she ain't interested in David. So everyone is there, right? We have Latrice, Letitia, Kaylin, the racist, Tamra, and Melanie. They're all there to support. We learn later on that Antoinette, Antoinette, because we know production did, invited everyone because she wanted to have the two groups come together and she wanted to extend an olive branch. Yeah, okay. But anyways, listen, y'all. I don't know why they had that sip and see. Her business was not ready for that. You see about two or three walls put up. There weren't even any bathrooms, which you have food and you have drink, but nowhere for, for your guests to relieve themselves. Very low brow, very day class A. You have a band, but once again, you don't even have a porta potty for your guests. It was very low brow and day class A. People arrived there. What did Nene Lee say? In our Versace and our fine gowns, and you're gonna tell me you don't even have a bathroom. You're asking folks to come and support, but you don't even have a decent spot for them to relieve themselves. No, ma'am, like Antoinette loves to play classy, but every time we see her, her wigs is lopsided on her head, and then she didn't have bathrooms for her guests. Like, no, ma'am, that, that was so, that, that was so rude, and that was so trashy. Like, I would have immediately left when she would have said that, but whatever. I hated her logo. It looked like she went to Microsoft Word, copy and pasted it, and blew it up and, and stuck it on the wall. Like, it, that can't be, that can't be her logo. It just can't be. Also, the word mint and the, the words mint and minted, they are very popular when it comes to dentistry and dentist practices. I would have loved to see a more creative name. Like I could think of a million minted or mint dentistries, right? Like mint is so common. Like I wish she would have chose something more creative. So needless to say, I don't like the name of her practice, but hell, it ain't my business or whatever. But I mean... She could have called it something different and maybe she will, right? Maybe she just needed to come up with a name for the show or whatnot, but that logo and that name was horrible. So Marie eventually arrives and we see Antoinette, Latrice, and Kaylon go outside. And Antoinette's just saying how she invited everyone, which <laughs> we know better. Production invited everyone, right? And that she wanted to extend an olive branch and she kind of wanted the two groups to come together, which it, 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 Antoinette is foolish. She don't care nothing about the rest of them girls. Like you, you, you want to denigrate a black woman's business with your white friend, right? You let this white woman come up into a space that wasn't for her and completely cause havoc and chaos, right? But then blame it on Marie. Like whatever, whatever, Antoinette. We get it. It's the last scene, and all the cast needs to be present. Next, we are towards the end of Antoinette Sip and See, and out of the blue, Letitia stands her ass there. And says, you know, I want to congratulate Antoinette on her sip and see. But I also wanted to announce that Farrah Street, they're not returning my calls. I'm heartbroken because I really wanted this to happen. Let me tell you something. The Oscar does not go to you, Letitia. One, I know production set you up to do this because it was the final scene. But that was hella rude for you to announce that at Antoinette's sip and see. That was about her business, not yours, right? I'm not sure why they couldn't give you a little dinner, right, to announce that at, but it was very rude and improper for them to have Letitia announce that her business uh, for right now is on pause while Antoinette is, is starting and celebrating the, the beginnings of hers. Like, it just was, it, 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 it didn't make sense, right? And I feel like that's one of the main complaints I have with Bell Collective is that things just seem out of order, but... Letitia makes that announcement and the women seem to be really supportive. You hear Latrice say like, listen, we're going we gonna to get it up and running. We got your back. This is going to happen. Meanwhile, we see Marie, you know, everyone's kind of comforting Letitia, you know, because the attention went from Antoinette to Letitia. And um, uh, Marie's about to leave. She's like, it's past my bedtime. I'll see you all later. Latrice decides to pull Marie to the side. Now, this is one of my other questions. This conversation seemed out of context, right? Latrice apologizes to Marie, but Marie does not apologize to Latrice. I felt that Marie did owe Latrice an apology because of how she acted at the first brunch. Like, if you felt her hair was trash, then you should have never worn it to the brunch. Marie should have pulled Latrice to the side at that first brunch and said, listen, my name is, introduce yourself and say, listen, I want to talk to you because I purchased some hair from you 
and it wasn't the quality I, I was expecting. And maybe we could have a lunch since you all are on the show, or maybe I can call you later. I just kind of want to get some feedback, or maybe I received a damaged product. I didn't want to bring it here because it wasn't the space, right? But Marie didn't do that. She decided to act a fool. So I'm not sure why Latrice was apologizing to her and Marie wasn't off also extending an apology. Um, if anything, Marie began to chastise her, telling her like, you know, I, you remind me of my younger self and you just can't retaliate that way. That threw me off because how did Latrice retaliate against Marie? And so from what I'm gleaning, there's going to be more information at the reunion. Apparently there's a lot that we did not see throughout the course of the show. So I'm interested because I didn't understand that conversation. Like if anything, Marie should have been offering an apology to Latrice and not the other way around. But if there's more things in the background, I think I'll save my complete opinion because once again, this conversation just seemed out of context. And lastly, I'll wrap up this scene by saying that Latrice in her one-on-one -on -one said that she stood by what she said. If you stood by what you said, whatever it was you said about Marie, then why did you apologize, right? Because you can smooth things over with an individual. You can agree to start anew without apologizing. So if you mean what you say and say what you mean, then don't offer the apology. And with that, you all, we are done with Bell collecting. Thank God. So my final thoughts. One, I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, initially I was not watching it until someone came in one of my lives I held like a couple of months ago and it was like, this white woman named Kaylin cussed out Marie. And I was like, okay, who is Marie and who is Kaylin? And they were like, do you watch Bell Collective? And so I thought that person could have been putting 10 on two. And I was like, well, let me go on watching and see what's going on. And, um, that person was not putting 10 on two, right? And I was appalled by what I saw on my TV screen. So that's when you all got the video the unmitigated caucasity, Kalon the racist, right? So ever since then, I've been watching it. So I do think it's a good show. I do think there is a space for this type of show. I am loving seeing black women entrepreneurs. So some critiques. First, this season seemed really disjointed. I could not tell whether or not we were in the middle of COVID or not. There were several scenes where I'm looking in the background and no one's wearing a mask. And then there were others where people were wearing masks in the background. So you see the servers, the bartenders, even at Marie and Essie's uh, ribbon cutting ceremony, there was one lone man in the back with a mask. So here's what I will say. COVID is very serious. And a lot of these reality TV shows have been irresponsible. And if they were filming during COVID, the fact that they had entire launch parties, sip and sees, ribbon cutting ceremonies and no one was wearing masks or even a shield that was very irresponsible and so hoping moving forward even though they may not have the budget of the big reality tv shows like real housewives they need to do better at making sure they're not only protecting their cast but also their crew and the people around them that are filming like they're in the background so um i'm not sure whether it was before covid you know bc or if it was during COVID, DC. But either way, if it was during COVID, they should have done a better job at um, making sure they had some protective equipment. Second, um, the storylines weren't very smooth or consistent. Um, the, the last episode, this left a lot to be desired. Like, I don't understand the discussion between Marie and Latrice. It seemed like there is something else or other things that may have occurred and we, the audience, didn't see it. We didn't get to see the entire space. Like, Antoinette's face was not ready for a sip and see, right? Like, it was not ready. Um, Marie and Essie's face, I don't know if that was ready because we, the audience, didn't get to see that facility. There were a lot of things that we as the audience, we were brought in on and then we were kind of left hanging on. Next critique is, when they come back, I need all the cast to get their fashions together, right? I need hair, I need makeup, I need style to be on point. To be fair, I, I didn't I didn't dislike the way Tambor dressed. It was more so her makeup and hair, right? And I love big hair, you all. I, I love I love big hair. Um if I have a picture of me and my crochets, I'll put it here, like the crochet hair. I love big voluminous hair, but there's a difference between big and voluminous and just tacky 
um, Letitia the same thing. Letitia is a beautiful woman. And she had on like this prom dress in her confessionals. Like I need y'all to step it up in the wardrobe and hair area next season. Also, I would love to see another full-time cast member, black woman, and other friends of the show. We need to make sure we remove Kayla on the races. She does not have a place on here and not because she's white, but because she's racist. And we've seen how she, she's behaved. We, we know how she thinks and she just doesn't have a space on this show because she's not an ally, right? If she were an ally differently, but she's not an ally, so she does not belong on this show. So um, also, I look forward to a longer season and more thought out storylines. There are plenty of things we don't know, like Antoinette and her father, they seem to have a really good relationship. But where's Antoinette's mom? I mean, I didn't hear much about her. Like, is she alive? Is she not? What happened? Why is she so close with her father? Like, she described going through, like, homelessness and things of that nature. There's more to Antoinette. Although I don't like her, there's more to her. There's more to Marie. There's more to Letitia. There's more to all. There's more to Tambor, right? Because Tambor started the season not wanting children. She ended the season asking Demond to help fertilize her eggs. So like there's other things going on in there. And I would love to see the second season really dive into these characters and produce real storylines because, and my final critique was this, Letitia and Glenn, every time they got in scene together, you could tell that it was fake. You could tell it was made up. They were laughing. They were giggling. They were on the brink of of just they were on the brink of laughing and ruining the scene so i didn't really mention that in too many of my reviews because listen i'm watching the show as is and providing my commentary but obviously i noticed it right it looked like they were just making something up for the camera so next season let's make sure everybody has a real storyline and that it's not rehearsed and scripted and fake but overall i did enjoy the show let me know your thoughts um, Real Housewives is next, you all. So if there is nothing else, I will see you all later. Mwah. Bye.